So this is an example of how to convert from our smart notebook software into a universal format that can be read by the Snowflake Canvas software. Uh, there are two ways to do this. The first way is the one that it keeps all the in interactivity on your board. So all the elements that you have you'll, will still be movable. So all of these things on here will be movable. You notice that here I have the smart notebook watermark. That'll disappear when I do the conversion. That's only because I'm not connected currently to a smart board. So I'm going to go to File, Export As, and I want to export it as CFF. It's the common file. And it's going to have an extension of IWB. I'm going to hit Save. Remember where I save it to. And then it's saved. And if I've saved it to some Google Drive or something that I could then pull up on the ClearTouch board, that would be great. Because I'm going to use the uh, ClearTouch Canvas software to import my old file. The other way of doing it is going to file export as PDF. And this is a way that we've uh, seen in the past where you can choose different formats, but it becomes static. Uh, you're not going to be able to move the components of the uh, pages. They're just going to be stuck on the page as is and not going to be able to move anything else around. So you could do that as an option if it's just some straight notes that you don't have any interactivity with you can convert just a PDF setup. Actually let me just do that and that way we can see both. Okay so now it's converted. So we're now going to go over to the Canva Canvas software in um, Snowflake and try that. So now let's look at Snowflake Canvas and see how we can import those files that we just created. Uh, one thing that you have to pay attention to when you're dealing with Snowflake Canvas is that anything that you already have on there, let's say I'm going to draw this on here, is going to become part of the new document when you import it. So the page one of this file will get merged with page one of the import file. So that's important to know. So I'm going to leave that up there so we can see it happen. So I'm going to click on my three dots. I like to call the hamburger and I'm going to go to import IWB. And now I'm going to find my file. And it's going to go ahead and import it all the elements onto the proper pages. Unfortunately, it does it kind of in reverse order to my mind, where page one is like the last page and kind of counts up backwards. So we can see our pages now. Here's page 14. To me, that kind of looks like the top, but they're counting the top down here. And you'll see when I go to that, it linked the data from the first page to the information that was already there. So this word simple ifs was there. And that was actually up here. And you can notice it was now down at the bottom of the screen. So the other issue that we have is some formatting issues where you can see before this was kind of formatted more like this. And these were different sizes. And this was a little bit bigger. But that's something you can adjust on the fly as you do it pretty easily. Uh, you can see that this is significantly smaller than it was before, so we'd want to change that. So there's a couple changes you'd have to make to the file. Once you're all done, you've done all the changes, you don't want to have to import this again, so you're going to save it as a native file. So we're just going to hit Save As, and we're going to save this as the Canvas Snowflake file. And you can save that you know, wherever you're, you're going to save your things. The one thing to know that um, the universal format file works on any interactive whiteboard software. So it's a good thing to be doing anyway to convert your files to this universal file format in case for some reason um, you didn't have access to notebook software. You could use this file format and use your data anywhere. 
Let's look at importing now that PDF version. So to do that, I'm going to just close the app and restart it. And it'll erase everything that was there. Unless I had saved it, of course. And if I saved it, it's still going to require me to reload it. And there we go. So now to import a PDF, it's not as simple as going to file open. If I go to file open, you'll notice that there is no PDF listed here. There's nothing listed on my desktop as a PDF. So I'm not going to be able to open it that way. So I have to really open it by bringing the PDF into the document. And I'm going to do that using uh, the media. I found seems to be a, a workable way of doing it. When I click on the file now, it's on the desktop. I can see it appears there. And it's going to import it as a uh, an object embedded inside of the Canvas document that I can control and manipulate. Like I did before. Sorry, I'm using my laptop. Here's not great. There it is. Um, and I can go to the different pages just using the navigation system. But you can see it's really static. It looks like it would get printed on a set of pages for um, some kind of printout that you would just hand to the students. So I don't like this method of doing it. Uh, I prefer to import it. It is a little bit more work, but it does give me the